You know, y'all have seen me fish with Captain Jim Ross from Florida Space Coast many times over the past several years. Well, let's call it a couple decades, that's what it is. It's been quite a long time. Well, we're gonna give old Jim a break today, let him run the camera boat and do a show with his son, Captain Justin Ross. Now, I've known Justin since, well, before he even saw the light of day. I call him JJ, and on today's episode, we're fishing right off Port Canaveral, my home waters, and uh, we're gonna call this episode Family Ties. This day was just a little bit different than the day before when we filmed with JJ's dad. It was absolutely flat, calm, perfect fishing conditions when we were with the old man. JJ had his work cut out for him because we had storms busting up all around us, the wind started kicking up, and we still had to run about seven, eight miles down the beach to go and catch bait. We're looking for the bait flipping on top of the water, like those just did right out there. And then we're gonna try and pull up alongside them and let Blair get a cast out on them. They've been running about 10 miles down the beach, got off Patrick Air Force Base here, and there is whew, scaled sardines everywhere. Just give me one flip. Yeah, that was a little better than I would have done. Got a couple years on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's loaded. Really? Holy crap. I do believe we got some bait, Yeah, you brother. got some bait there. Get on down there. Swell coming in. <clears throat> Good bait. That should be all we need to keep alive anyway. If not at all, JJ, we sure showed him how to catch bait today. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you know, it is pretty surreal shooting the show with Captain Justin. I've known the kid forever. Just to have him take charge and say, hey, okay, where are we going? What are we gonna do? It's definitely neat shooting with the new generation of captains. Well, JJ, we got our bait, we got the boat clean. It's your call, brother. Where are we going? I think we're going to start out on the Corsham, see if we can't chum up some of those unicorn fish out there, <laughs> and then uh, maybe run off to some other reefs if, we don't, if we're not doing so hot. Well, I do believe we're going to whack them. We got the right bait. We got the right rigs. I think we got the right captain here. We'll see. <laughs> Let's do it, brother. Let's go. The whole line of Skeeter boats from the SX-210 up to the 24-footer, what Captain JJ runs all the time, they're made to do two things, get you to your fishing spot and then get you back home safe. All right, Jackies, you're in trouble now. Let's see, yep, we're above it. Oh, I got a CUDA following mine down. Water is so clear, I can still see that jig head all the way down there. So it sticks up pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, we get a... Uh... Like, like you said, we, we may get some, some snapper off of this. We yeah. toss a couple baits out. The elusive unicorn. <laughs> I think we found that looks like bait. Well, it might be some snapper in there. A little bit of green. Yeah, there might be one or two in there. That's a big loggerhead. There's even a better mark. Oh yeah, that's a real good one. Yeah, that's snapper faux show. That's sure. solid. You want to toss that trolling motor in the water? I can do that.
<laughs> Look at that on the screen now. Get a good one back there. Oh yeah, look at this mark. Oh yeah. Now do you hook yours through the eye or up through the bottom? I'll come in there inside their mouth so they can still breathe if I'm gonna if I'm gonna hook them in the nose. That way they can still sit there and breathe. I like to hook mine right through that clear part in their in the front of their eye. Me too, they usually stay on better than that. Let's see. Yep, we're above it. Oh, I got a cuda following mine down. Water is so clear, I can still see that jig head all the way down there. There's a fish right there, brother. There you go, get him. I'm gonna clear this line for you. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's big. It's big. Oh, look what we got rolling through the CUDA squad. Ooh. I wonder if it's big and red. Might be a unicorn. Kind of feeling like a jack. Yeah, it could be one of those big jacks we saw swimming. Oh, nope. You know what it is? What is it? A big fish. Looks like a black is that a drum. Mar is it a margate? That's a That's giant a margate. margate, dude. What the? That is the biggest Margate I've ever seen in my life. Holy cow. Holy moly, look at this thing. <laughs> That's that a, a monster. Wow. Almost like a black drum. He's sticking his tongue out at you. Yeah. That is a cool fish. I love how silver they are. What a beautiful fish. And I don't think we're gonna keep any today. That would be a keeper though. <laughs> Back at you. you no, know, a margate is actually part of the grunt family. And when you get one that size coming up, it looked a lot like a snapper. So I thought it was a snapper. And when they get that size, they even fight like a snapper. They're pretty good to eat too. So that is a margate. Dude, that's the biggest margate I've ever seen. Well. When I was shooting with your old man the other day, he caught the biggest kingfish I've ever seen come out of Port Canaveral. That thing was huge. He was 50 plus pounds. We couldn't find a scale that was big enough. Let's get this guy back in. He swallowed his tongue, so off he goes. There he goes. See him spitting the bubbles back out? Yep. It's not bad for first blood, Yeah, bro. man, that was awesome. Let's see what else we can I was going to say, let's go see if we can't get another one. Just not wanting to get down on the bottom. I don't think I'd want to either if I was able to see that screen that lit up like that. No, if I was in the water, I wouldn't want to be looking at those either. All righty. That's a green turtle, ain't it? Yeah. I like to drop it to the bottom and give it about two handle turns up. So he's just suspending up there. What rate right did you say this one is? This is the Corsham. The that Corsham. We're on right now. And we just had about 150 Jack Carvel swimming around the boat. So I got one down here on the bottom. Hopefully one of them snapper are gonna eat it. But I am rigged and ready for some of them Jack Carvel to come back because they are a lot of fun to catch, as y'all seen. <laughs> You know, as me and your dad have fished together so many years now. We went through captain school together 25 years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, we've done quite a few shows with the old man and always have a good time, especially with those Jack Carvel. There's people that still talk about that show. They can go see it anytime they want, though, on the internet. Yeah, those hour jacks, right? Yep, hour jacks. Come on, jacks, come back. We need some rod bending, action, drag screaming. Frigate bird action. Oh. oh he's, there you go, get him. Oh, it's a double. Tunnel. It's a double. And mine's going one way, yours is going the other. <laughs> oh, I think he got off. 
Oh, man. Mine broke me off on something. At least you got your weight back, huh? Yeah. Yep, this was feeling like a jacket. One thing that's good or bad about Jack Carvel is they'll fight you all the way back to the boat. Oh, yeah. So I will definitely be having me a bunch of water after this one. I can see him right there. Ain't got a chance on this short stick. I don't think I've used this one on the show yet. This is the boat rod. This is the this one, seven footer. Yep, it's a Jackie Cravalli. Look, I'm bringing the whole school up. Yeah, when these jacks get big, they're no slouch. It's kind of the rod I like to use for a snapper because it's a short rod. You can do short little pumps with it. Just like that. Never give up and never let him have a bit of a bit of slack. Round and round we go. Oh. Catch a yellow submarine. I thought we were gonna have a breeze today. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? You got a big Goliath grouper chasing him, trying to eat him. Was that a grouper? Yeah. I thought it was a shark. No, it was a grouper. Look how he was real wide. That was a big old Goliath. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was a shark, man. We're getting so inundated with those Goliath grouper around here. I know, there's so many. And they'll eat everything that comes off of this rack. Whoo, that's a nice jack. That's a nice jack right there. Come here, you. Oh, there's a jack down in Bahamas that I caught one time. It's a big eye jack. You don't want to grab their tails like that because of the, the back shoats, or not the shoats, but the back the tail back here will uh -huh. literally cut you to death. Get that rolling circle out. Yeah. Roll it. There. They make a unique sound too, don't they? Yeah. Fun fighting fish. Hopefully that will bite my juggler vein. But man, that's a cool fish. Pound for pound, I don't think there's a fish that fights any harder than these guys right here. No, they're strong. Even down in Costa Rica, I was catching rooster fish the same size as the big Jack Carvel here, 20, 30 pounders. These guys fight a lot harder. But uh, Jack Cravelli, otherwise known as the Hour Jack or Tackle Buster. <laughs> and off he goes. That's one down. Nice job, man. Look at this. One fish. That's nice. Well, welcome back, folks. We have been everywhere, it seems like, over the Atlantic today, from way down south almost to Melbourne, out about 10 miles, back into the port because Mother Nature had a storm come up on us and it looked pretty nasty. And that's why it's kind of bumpy out here. We ran the beach looking for tarpon, saw a few, but they just didn't want to eat. So came back out to one of my favorite spots out here, just about 10 miles off of Port Canaveral. And it was a bumpy ride coming out. I don't know why it was so bumpy, but I think it's because the current's going one way, wind's going the other way, and it just makes it like a washing machine. But as you can see, once you get out here and stop, you can stand up on the back deck of these boats and fish all day long. So we're gonna drop down on the last spot of the day with some scaled sardines on knocker rigs and see what we can catch. Hang on, JJ, because this is a good spot. Try and pull up a different kind of brown fish. That'd be nice. On the bottom. I ain't on the bottom, I got a fish. Right, I'm over you. Yep. Hopefully it's big and brown. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool to pull Kobe up, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm seeing mine, and he's gone. What do you look like? Uh, I don't know. He was... Actually, it's fighting more like a snapper. Yeah. He's on the way down. There might be a school of them down there. 
There he is. What he's you got? I, he's <laughs> looking red. <laughs> looking red, he's looking eh? red. This one's fighting like he's red. Oh! He come oh. off? Oh, man. <laughs> it was a red snapper, a big one. Oh, well, I'll land JJ's. Get up here. What you got, JJ? Get up here, get up here. We saw it, it looked brown and he was about 15 feet down. And since red's the first color to disappear in the water column down there about 15 feet, that's why they kind of look brown down there. Oh yeah, he's looking real red. He's looking real red. Looking real big too. Yeah. Come here, sir. There, it's a big porgy. <laughs> <laughs> red snapper, a big one. A red snapper. I used the bogo on this one. Woo, that's a grown one, brother. Swing him over to you. I told you we're gonna show you one today. <laughs> or another one. Another one. That one is a healthy red snapper. Yeah, man. Circle there hook. There we go. Circle hook. There you go. Thank you, sir. A nice, healthy American red snapper. <laughs> See that unicorn horn coming out of his head? Yeah, I see it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why we call them unicorn fish here in just a second. That's a pretty one, JJ. Yeah, man, that's a nice fish. Kick on out of here, buddy. Are they the most gorgeous fish? Oh, the they're world awesome. They're awesome. Whew. It has been a hot one, too. If y'all ever want to do this, make sure you go to the website, addictedfishing.com. Or you can go to JJ's website, which is... FinelandFishingCharters.com. Hey, wait a minute, that's your dad's website. No, it's mine, he's just sort of on there as well. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you. much for a great day. Thank you for having First me. First time I've ever fished somebody with somebody that I've known since they were in diapers. <laughs> and it was a ton of fun. <laughs> it was a good time. We'll catch y'all next week. You know, if you happen to read the snapper regulations that have been put into place the past few years, you'd never think you'd be able to see one of those fish, much less catch one. That's kind of like why we call them the unicorn fish, because you know they don't have a horn, they're just supposedly really, really rare. And if you talk to any of the local fishermen out here, you know, we're catching them out here kingfishing, actually trolling for kingfish and these snapper coming up off the bottom. It definitely shows you that that fishery has been regulated well and these fish are everywhere. That about wraps up today's show. If y'all want to fish with Captain JJ, make sure you go to the website, addictivefishing.com. And while you're there, you can register for our weekly blog that comes out, and you can also register to win a trip fishing with me this year. That about wraps up today's show. We'll see y'all next week. Check out more footage from this show by logging on to addictivefishing.com for outtakes and bloopers. <laughs> Or knocking yourself in the head when he bites through the line. <laughs> oh, yeah, get, get a close up of that. <laughs> oh, oh, that's called a zing pow. <laughs>